So we now have episode 11 of The Walking Dead Season 11. This episode is called Rogue Element. And if you haven't seen the episode and you don't want to get it spoiled for you, do not listen to this review because this review is going to contain full spoilers for the episode. You've been warned. So of course this was our third episode of the second half. I thought episode 9 was awesome. Honestly, fantastic. Episode 10 was really good. And I'd have to say, this is the weakest episode out of the three we've got, we've got so far. It's by no means one of the worst Walking Dead episodes, but it's just not on the level of the other two. This one, for the majority of the episode, we follow Eugene as he's going around questioning the Commonwealth, questioning what happened to Stephanie. He's picturing all these people, imagining that they had something to do with her disappearance. So he's running around the Commonwealth, breaking entries and just running around trying to figure out everything he possibly can also you've got a small storyline with carol as she gets close to the lance hornsby and you do get a bit of uh kelly and connie as they go around researching the commonwealth so to get the smallest storyline out of the way i'm gonna talk about carol and lance hornsby they first go off to some small community that they they're making some drug that the uh, commonwealth then uses in their hospital and they're having negotiations on how they should get the supplies, how much more they have to pay for the supplies, and they kind of just go back and forth. The only reason they're really showing the storyline is just to show that the Commonwealth does uh, trade and negotiate with people outside the Commonwealth. I'm not talking about Alexandria, but I imagine this is a setup for the CRM, because I imagine the Commonwealth and the CRM 100% know each other. The Commonwealth is 50,000 members strong. The CRM is twenty or 200,000 members strong, so they definitely know of each other so i feel like this was just a small bit of a setup to show that the commonwealth does negotiate with people who are not part of the commonwealth it's really good to see carol going up in this rank she's she started off last week in episode 10 being a baker and now she's slowly getting really close to lance hornsby i imagine now after what she's done with lance in this episode where she gave him information on the fact that what actually happened here i imagine now ezekiel is going to get his treatment i imagine she has now done what she had to do so ezekiel will now be able to get his cancer treatment and hopefully ezekiel will end up being okay i imagine ezekiel will be fine for the cancer i imagine if ezekiel dies it's going to be from a bullet or a bite wound it's not going to be from cancer and i'm really glad that ezekiel is fine to fight another day because i'd be shocked if he did actually end up dying from this but it's really cool to see a bit more of Lance. Lance is a character, in the comic books anyways, he was pretty much a throwaway character. I felt like when they got to the Commonwealth, Lance was kind of on scene from it. It was always uh, Pamela Milton. And Pamela Milton, her son, who um, Sebastian Milton and Mercer. I felt like they were, those, those three were the big three and Lance Hornsby was thrown to the side. But at the moment, it feels like it's Lance and then Mercer. We've seen Pamela once, we saw Sebastian a few times, but at the moment it feels like Lance Hornsby is one of the big players in the Commonwealth and I actually really like his character, so I'm glad to see that. And Carol is a character that they've been struggling to know what to do with, especially you could tell after she killed Alpha in season 10, you could tell she'd been struggling to know what to do with. Now, like, she kind of, you feel like they know what to do with her now, but also... I can tell they don't fully know, but I really do wonder what's going to happen with her. Obviously, we know the Carol and Daryl spin-off show, which a lot of people are actually speculating now was a lie. They're only saying that to trick you to maybe that Daryl or Carol will die in the final season. I cannot see Carol dying. She survived so much. I imagine she's just going to survive the whole series, but honestly, who knows what's going to happen with her character. Our second storyline, of course, follow Connie and Kelly. My biggest negative and complaint with this storyline is something that I hope is just on the version of the episode I watched, hopefully on other places, like if it was Amazon Prime or whatever people watch it on, or hopefully in the future when the Blu-ray does get released, hopefully this is not an issue. But whenever Kelly and Connie were talking to each other, even there's a sequence when they're in their apartment by themselves that goes on for a good two minutes and they look like they're having an in-depth conversation back and forth between the two of them what i watched didn't have any subtitles i had no idea what they're talking about and it was extremely frustrating because it's information i feel like is very important and i really wanted to know but they were community of course connie is deaf so they're communicating by um uh uh, sign language and i was really disappointed that i had no idea what they're saying i hope that future releases like on the blu-ray this will not be an issue but honestly it was very very frustrating for me to watch this having no idea what they were saying but their storyline was of course connie is a news reporter she talks to her um i assume it's her supervisor her supervisor's telling her that 
pretty much says that we don't do any groundbreaking stories here. We do what's approved by the government. We do not break any rules. We do not try and take down any politicians like you would have in the real world. Here, you are giving scoops like talking about the new newspaper or the new uh, cupcakes or whatever. You aren't doing anything important here. You're just writing stuff. Connie, of course, doesn't like that. So then she goes off looking for stories, looking for stories to break. She goes off. She talks to Mercer, who is a character I am getting really, really fond of, really like his character. We also see she goes to the um, the hospital where Tyler Durkin, of course, the guy who um, tried to kill Pamela Milton in the last week's episode, she goes to where he is. She's trying to find out all this information and, of course, nothing's really going her way until the very end when, in that sequence where she has a two-minute conversation with Connie or with Kelly and I have no idea what they're talking about, a letter gets pushed under the door that has a bunch of names there was no names on the list i recognize except for tyler durkin of course again the guy who tried to kill pamela milton but i imagine this is a list of people who have tried to do an uprising or do something within the commonwealth who have then gone missing because i imagine we're not going to see this character again i imagine the commonwealth has either banished them or probably straight up just killed them or maybe they gave them to the crm as a uh, as A's or B's, whatever the Commonwealth or the CRM needed at that time, but I imagine these are a list of people that we are never going to see it again. But the Connie and Kelly storyline, it was one that I feel like it was more of a setup storyline rather than the storyline that was giving us anything. It was just setting up that okay, there's these people who go missing. If you question Commonwealth, you're gonna go missing, and it's just one that I am more interested to see what's gonna happen next, just purely on what the hell is going on here because it is a storyline with Connie and Kelly that of course going off the comic book storyline there wasn't a storyline here Connie and Kelly I think Kelly was in the comic books I know for a fact Connie wasn't in the comic book series but this whole thing with people going missing I do not remember it in the store in the comic book so I really do wonder where this whole storyline is going to go with the two of them Okay, and then the big storyline is, of course, Eugene and Stephanie. This was a storyline that a lot of people have been predicting since we first met Stephanie in episode 3, I want to say episode 4 of season 11. And it's a storyline that um, this episode mostly focused on. And I enjoyed it. I didn't love it. This is one of the reasons why it was a weaker episode. Eugene's character that we've been with, he's probably like one of the longest running survivors on the show from top of my head, I can only imagine, I don't think it's um, Carol, Daryl and Maggie who are on the show longer than him now, which is quite insane that him and Rosita are people that are in the top five survivors of the show now. It's been going on that long, they're still there. But anyways, uh, him and Stephanie, do you, see, you see they actually stepped together overnight. They, she's reading his book, you, say, you see him, he says he loves her, she says it back. You see that Eugene is finally happy, they're meeting up that night have ice cream Eugene sitting there holding two ice creams and she never shows he goes to her apartment he's knocking on her door no answer and then he sees she's packing up a suitcase or he doesn't see it we see she's packing up a suitcase and it really makes us go what the hell is happening here then Eugene goes into full tracking down mode he he opens up a case with the um the police with Rosita in particular saying that she's gone missing they see what they can do nothing gets found so Eugene then goes into full detective mode detective mode with princess throughout the entire episode trying to figure out what has happened here of course he gets pissed drunk he then sees a guy who he recognizes from the night he went to her apartment the night where she would have went missing according to him he then yeah, follows the guy and it goes on a bit he tries to um break into a guy's apartment try and get answers it really does go on he even gets yeah, arrested at one point because he broke into the apartment princess is going on the whole episode saying uh we should stop this she's just gone just accept it she doesn't want to straight up say to her that she broke up with you she left you he's trying to sugarcoat it but then at a point she has to say it and to talk about princess princess is 10 times better in the comic book or in the tv series than she was in the comic book series in the comic book series she was always a very irritating character to me but in the tv series she's becoming one of my favorites i really enjoy the character of princess and i'm glad that she's much better in the tv series than she was in the comic book series and i'd love her and negan to meet i feel like they have well not so much negan now i when i remember when i read the comic book series first i thought to myself i would love to see those two meet negan now not so much but negan during the savior arc when he was full of energy so cocky so funny i feel like they would have done great but Negan now probably not I feel like he'd be annoyed at her more than really enjoying talking to her 
But in the apartment they break into, they do find a lot of weapons. Princess even calls Lance out and she goes, oh, isn't that illegal? It's actually revealed and it's not illegal for ordinary citizens who are fully licensed in this commonwealth but for our group it's illegal for them to carry weapons within the commonwealth but anyways lance talks to him lance talks him down he explains to him the whole situation that he doesn't know what happened to her she just wants to move away and whatever and then it's revealed that uh uh what's his face eugene doesn't buy any of this he goes to the factory place he does end up finding stephanie and it's revealed that she was a double agent I think most of you predicted she was a double agent. And you see her. She, I don't think it's her who knocks him down. Or someone else knocks him down. But uh, Lance explains everything. Or Eugene starts shouting at Lance. And Lance just goes back on Eugene. Explaining everything. Why they done what they did. How they done what they did. And you can see Lance's perspective. He's like all I done was trick you into getting all these questions. So we can get the best answers possibly. For the... Um, for Alexandria, for Hilltop, if all your friends who are now better off, where they would have starved to death back in Alexandria, if they are now better off here and all you had to go through was a broken heart, I think that was a good sacrifice. And it's going off, it's, it tries to make you feel like Lance is the bad guy, but Lance isn't the bad guy here. He's a guy who even explains himself here, he goes, what I done wasn't bad, what I done has given your friends food, safety, sanctuary, all of this is good for your friends. And all you have to do is a broken heart. You have sacrificed for your friends. And you can move on. And you can see Eugene later on in the episode. It's honestly heartbroken. He's burning his book. He's sitting outside burning whatever he has. That reminds him of Stephanie. And then someone walks out the back. Who was um, who, who plays Max. Who is Pamela Milton's receptionist. Who is also. Uh, La not Lance. Who was also Mercer's sister. And then it's revealed that this is actually the true Stephanie. This is the one who was talking to him on the radio. And I really wonder what's going to happen here. I imagine Eugene's going to be very standoffish at first. Saying why did you do what you had to do? Why did you do everything? And then it's going to go from there. I'm excited to see this whole story progress. This whole storyline progress from here. Because I imagine Stephanie. The real Stephanie. If her name isn't even Stephanie. It might actually be Max. But I wonder what's going to happen with Max and uh, Eugene, mostly because in the comic book series they do end up together. I imagine they will end up together. I imagine Eugene's going to be happy, but I wonder what's going to happen. I don't know what episode 12 is going to bring. I am very excited for episode 12. The Walking Dead season 11 part 2 has been better than part 1. I enjoy part 1, but part 2, the whole storyline with the Commonwealth, I think is a lot more interesting than the Reaper storyline, but I'm really excited for it episode 12 and if you want to hear my thoughts in episode 12 make sure you click that subscribe button to come back and hear it in the near future and as always thanks for watching